the year is somewhere in the 19th century, and Europe is in a delicate balance of power known as the Concert of Europe, which was established so that one nation couldn't take over the world, which was of great interest to European powers for reasons. And there is absolutely nothing that could possibly topple this balance of power. Oh wait, Britain just started splendid isolation. Oh no, the Ottoman Empire has become sick. And worst of all, Prussia just united the Germanic states and beat up Austria and then France. They then pretend themselves... The German Empire. Austria forgives Germany, France does not. Possibly because they took this piece of land from them. Germany then tries to become friends with Russia, since Russia is big and strong. However, Russia beats up the Ottoman Empire, helping these countries in the Balkans declare their independence. Austria is the protector of the Balkan countries and thinks they should have influence over the Balkans. Meaning there is a divide between Austria-Hungary and Russia. Germany chooses the side of Austria-Hungary, forming the Dual Alliance. However, despite this, Germany then forms a secret truce with Russia to not attack each other in the event France declares war. However, Germany then gets a new Kaiser. A Kaiser is what Germany calls its king. This new Kaiser then fires their lead diplomat slash chancellor Otto von Bismarck. And so Germany does not renew their truce with Russia. France then seeks an opportunity to contact Russia and form the Franco-Russian alliance. They then convince Britain to break their splendid isolation and join their friend group, forming the Triple Entente. Britain has a bit of a grudge against Germany, since they've been trying to match the Royal Navy for a while now. Meanwhile, Germany had invited Italy into the group, trying to win the Dual Alliance into the Triple Alliance. Romania also secretly joined the Triple Alliance, and vowed to join in on any defensive conflicts that the group enters into. And because they joined secretly, that's why it's still called the Triple Alliance and not the Quadruple Alliance. However, Romania had some disputes with Hungary over the rights of Romanians in Transylvania. And so the stage is set. Two sets of opposing alliances, secret treaties being formed left, right and centre. Europe has become a huge barrel of dynamite and all that is needed to set it off is a spark. That spark would come on June 28, 1914 when heir to the Austrian throne, Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated by an extremist within the Serbian Black Hand organization, in hopes that his death would liberate Bosnia from Austria. Austria is super annoyed that their heir was assassinated, and they blame the Serbian government for the shooting, claiming that they were involved in the assassination, which they might have been. However, the Austrian government had no solid proof of their involvement, so they sent a bunch of unacceptable demands to Serbia, most of which Serbia agreed to accept. The one demand they didn't accept was allowing the Austro-Hungarian police force to operate within Serbia. And in response, Austria-Hungary declared war. In response to that, Russia began to mobilize against Germany and Austria, causing them to declare war. France joined the war on the side of Russia. To begin with, Britain didn't join the war, despite being in the Entente. However, they were very much on the side of France. To start the war, Austria-Hungary began its invasion of Serbia. However, Serbia is surprisingly hard to invade, and Austria-Hungary suffers heavy losses meaning it could not repel Russia as effectively as it wanted to, since it had to divert many troops to fight Serbia. Fortunately for Austria-Hungary, Germany was ready to help fight the Russians. However, upon mobilization, 80% of the German army was fighting on the Western Front for their main plan, famously known 
as a Schieflund plan, a plan designed to knock out France by using the right wing of the German army, the flank French army, by going through the Netherlands and Belgium and going south, encircling Paris and pinning the French army against the Swiss border. And then after France is defeated, they will then make their army go fight Russia which, before they can mobilize properly. However, this plan was created before the war and had many modifications to it, such as reducing the size of the right wing of the army relative to the left wing, as well as making the decision to not go through the Netherlands. Some historians argue that these modifications made it unrealistic to expect the success of the German army. However, despite these concerns, the plan was carried out and the German army marched through Belgium, prompting the British to finally enter the enter war with Germany. Despite British involvement and harsh Belgian resistance, Germany initially made good progress, and you would be forgiven if you thought at this point Germany was going to win. And maybe they would have. However, a German general named von Klunk disobeyed orders given to him, and as a result, had moved his army too far to the south, opening a gap that the Allies used to try and flank the German army, forcing them to retreat. And after the two sides failed to outflank each other, they then began digging trenches as a defense, as a defense, resulting in the creation of trench warfare, meaning the Western Front was largely at a stalemate for most of the war. Meanwhile, on the Eastern Front, Russia had mobilized a lot quicker than Germany expected, forcing them to divert troops from the Western Front to the East. However, due to how quickly they mobilized, they lacked many of their heavy equipment and support, meaning that they were unable to launch a complete offensive. One of the things to keep in mind is that when Britain entered the war, it wasn't just Britain that joined, it was also all of their colonies and other friends, such as Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and India, which made invading Belgium start seeming like a really bad idea. Meanwhile in Africa, the Allies took most of Germany's colonies, and in the Pacific front, New Zealand took this little island nobody cares about, and Australia took German New Guinea. Japan also noticed they could eat some stuff from Germany, and declared war on Germany, and consumed a bunch of their islands. Meanwhile, Italy was being a bit divided, e even though they joined the Central Powers. They were they only agreed to join defensive wars, and they decided that since Austria-Hungary declared war, they did not have to join in. And after the Entente powers promised some stuff from Austria, they joined the war against the Dual Alliance, prompting Austria-Hungary to divert troops to fight Italy. However, due to the mountains, making much progress on either side was very difficult. On top of that, Austria-Hungary were still struggling to fight Serbia, especially now that they were only able to use a third of their army to, to fight the Serbs. So then, Bulgaria, who was a bit bitter about another war loss to Serbia, decided to invade Serbia on the 14th of October 1915. And so within a month, Serbia was effectively defeated, with its main army evacuated to Greece, and Bulgaria and Austria-Hungary divided the land between them. So, you would think that with the main cause of the war defeated, the war would just end. Well, no. By now, everyone already wanted to kill each other, and Serbia's defeat wasn't going to stop them. Meanwhile, the Ottoman Empire decided it wanted the Russian Caucasian regions, and so they declared war on Russia. However, they initially got smashed by the Russians, and to make things even worse for them, the British and Anzac troops were launching naval invasions, such as Gallipoli, which fortunately for the Ottoman Empire was a massive failure. And ever since then, Australia and New Zealand both have Anzac Day, where they remember those fallen at Gallipoli. However, the Ottoman Empire was still struggling on the Egyptian front against the RAF. So, when the Ottoman Empire realized what was happening, they decided to march into ethnic Armenian and Christian territory 
and decide to do stuff that would probably get my channel restricted if I talked about. Meanwhile, Russia was whispering into Romania's ear all the things it could get if it joined the war on the side of the Entente. And so on the 27th of August 1916, they attacked Hungary and occupied a good portion of Transylvania before the German Knight Army decided that they had to leave. And so Romania was promptly defeated on the 9th of December 1916. During all this time, Britain had been blockading German supplies in order to starve them to defeat. However, German U-boats were intercepting British trade of North America. And so, when in 1915, they sunk an American passenger ship, the RMS Lusitania, there was some outrage in the American public, and Germany promised not to target passenger liners, even though the RMS Lusitania was carrying weapons to the Allied cause. Back in Russia, the communist movement was gaining popularity, and eventually the Tsar was forced to abdicate, and Germany saw an opportunity and decided to free Vladimir Lenin, a communist and president in Switzerland, and sent him to Russia, where he would advocate for an immediate end to the war. And so, when he took power, he signed an armistice with Germany, but refused any of their terms. So, and so Germany decided to invade them some more, forcing Russia to cede vast amounts of land to the German government. However, by now, the United States had decided to declare war on Germany after they asked Mexico to beat up the US. And the US was sending troops over to destroy Germany. So Germany's new plan was to use all the troops it had on the Russian front to go over to the Western front and knock out France before the Americans could arrive in numbers. So Germany launched many counterattacks against the Allied powers. However, while some attacks did well, eventually the Americans proved too powerful for the Germans and they were being pushed back as well as that. Greece had also joined the war against the Central Powers via some Allied pressure and a national schism and the French and British fought the Bulgarians to surrender after the Vardar offensive in North Macedonia. Then Austria-Hungary surrendered just before the Ottoman Empire and then finally, after the German military command described the situation as hopeless and the Kaiser abdicated, Germany finally agreed to an armistice on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918. So every year on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we give a minute of silence for the 8 million slain, 7 million permanently disabled, at 15 million seriously injured. May they rest in peace, lest we forget.